Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we want to build a to-do list app we created using Xcode and then run it in an iOS simulator. In the previous session, we created an Android app bundle from the to-do list app and uploaded it to the Google Play Store. Now we want to run the app in iOS. To do this, go to this section in reactnative.dev. Note that you must be on the React Native CLI tab and the macOS and iOS options are selected. You must first install Node and Watchman through the terminal using these commands. Then download and install the latest version of Xcode from the App Store. Then install CocoaPods to manage the modules used on the iOS side using this command. Well, now your environment is ready to run a React Native project on the macOS, on the simulator, or iOS device. You can download the project through GitHub and open it in VS Code. In the iOS folder, there is a file called PodFile. Because we didn't use Flipper in the project, it's better to disable it. Now with the npm install command, we install the modules that are in the package.json file. Well, among the modules we use, we need an additional module for one of the modules, push notification. Install this module which is for displaying notifications in iOS using this command. Here are the steps to link this module. First, using this command, we install the pod associated with this module and the rest of the available modules. As you can see in the iOS folder, a folder called pods has been created. Now we need to apply the settings using Xcode. Go to the project folder and inside the iOS folder, run the project file with the extension XC workspace. Waiting for the files to be indexed by Xcode. Well, now we have to add these two items in the project as capabilities. Click on the project name and go to the Signing and Capabilities tab. There we add the Background Modes item and check the Remote Notifications option. We also add the push notifications item. Now in the appdelegate.h file, we first add this line in the import section. Then we update this line as the protocols used in the project. Then in the appdelegate.m file, we add these two lines to the imports and do this at the top of the file.
Then we add these lines to the file. Now open workspace settings from the file menu. Here we set the build system to legacy build system. Now click on the project again and this time go to the build settings tab. Here in the search pass section, select the library search pass value and move the inherited value to the bottom of the list. Now we can build the app through the product menu or run the app by selecting a simulator from this list. In this case, the app will run on the selected simulator after a successful build. As you can see, the app runs properly on the simulator. Now we can create a new task. Components whose style is cluttered, you can define different styles for them depending on the platform. Well, I will create a new task. and I set a notification for that. Unfortunately, we can't test the camera on the simulator and we need a real device to open it. Well, I saved the task and as you can see, the task is created correctly in the to-do list. Now I will wait for the notification to be displayed. As you can see, this happened. And if we click on it, we will be transferred to the app. Now I change the task status to done. Well, as you can see in the text of the error, it can't recognize the font that we have defined for the item. In iOS, this usually happens for some fonts where the original font name is different from the font file name. To solve this problem, go to the global style file. And where we have defined this font using the platform, we change the font name for use in iOS. Well, as you can see, the font is applied correctly. Now we want to change the app's launcher icon to our liking. To do this, we can use this site, which we used before for the Android launcher icon. In this section, we just hold the iPhone tick. We upload the desired image and generate the desired file. Well, open the downloaded file and go to this pass.
Here we select and copy images with different sizes along with the contents.json file. Then we go to this path in the project folder and paste them. And replace the existing file. Well, the app icon has not changed yet. First, we stop the app from here. We terminate the metro. And run the app again. Well, as you can see, the app's launcher icon changed successfully. Now, if you want to publish the app on the App Store or output it as an IPA file, in the signing section, you must place the selected team on a profile that has an active developer or enterprise account. You can also change the bundle identifier to your liking, which of course must be a unique identifier. Then in this section, you have to put the option on any iOS device instead of iOS simulators. And through the product menu and archive option, create your desired output. So there we go, we learned how to build the app using Xcode and then run it in an iOS simulator. I consider this session as the final session of this series. Then you can watch other channel videos about React Native and also upgrade your level by watching the next series. Now if you enjoyed the series, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.